Hey y'all, this is episode number three in a series putting together on Successful Fathers by James B. Stinson. And I wasn't sure if I was going to get a video in this evening or not. And it's late. Uh, I don't have a studio in this house or anything. So I move around to different places, but I have to basically wait until everybody goes to bed and the house is quiet. Um, so the lighting's not great. But, um, and I'll talk a little quieter because uh, people, people are quiet. But I uh, had a terrific day. Day at school was, uh, was fantastic. We celebrate at our school uh, every year the, uh, we, we, all saints, um, celebrate all the saints. Um, and so the day after, after Halloween, All Hallows, All Holies Eve, um, is the Solemnity of All Saints, and since it is on a Sunday this year, we decided to celebrate it today, and uh, it's it's awesome. It's one of my favorite days of the year. That almost the entire student body dresses up as all the different saints throughout uh, history, and uh, it's just it's a really joyful celebration. So good day, busy day. Um, came home, had some other work to do, and then Isaac and I had a chance to, um, conditions were right, wind was blowing the right direction, and so we jumped out, got our camouflage on, headed out into the woods to see if we um, could uh, get a deer. We're uh, out of venison, and uh, we need to start putting some in the freezer. <clears throat> but anyways, we went up and Stan just had a great night with Isaac. Um, he's, he's just... Um, He's just, uh, he's fantastic to hunt with, great kid, really quiet, patient, um, sits still, he looks around, um, and so the two of us just sat there quietly for, you know, about an hour or so, and sure enough, with four minutes left of legal, legal shooting time, um, out of the, out of the woods like ghosts, you start seeing these dark shapes, and so all, like a small herd of deer came out, but we just kind of laughed because you, you couldn't, couldn't make an ethical shot on a deer, and um, went down, but uh, so a great evening, but kind of pushed things late and, and uh, it was dark. So I'm doing this this video late tonight. So um, Don't know if we'll get one tomorrow night. We may go camping. Not sure um, But uh, we'll try. I'll see if I can keep going with these. So number three uh, In this this back section on successful fathers today There's other sections in here with talking points and at the end of this I'm gonna pull a few of those but uh, this is number three as a consequence of this vision, and, and Stinson is, he's following on the previous point in the previous video, that uh, the, this vision of an idea of raising your children with an eye towards the adults that you want them to become, says, as a consequence of this vision, they, successful fathers, frequently talk with their wives about the children's character strengths and weaknesses. Such men are conscious that their wives are probably more sensitive and insightful in these areas, and they have respect for their judgment. Though they may have disagreements with their wives on tactical matters, they are determined to come to some agreement. They realize how important it is for the children to see the parents united. Got to stress that. They, they are determined to come to some agreement. They realize how important it is for the children to see the parents united, especially in matters of discipline. Furthermore, though the parents may argue in front of the children, both are careful never to have a heated quarrel. There's much to be said for the children seeing parental disagreements resolved amicably through compromise, but quarrels are a threat to the family unit. Um, I'm going to try to go through this quickly, just, you know, um, points, um, talking points. Uh, the idea that, that successful fathers talk with their wives about um, their children's strengths and weaknesses to, on some occasion, go through and talk about the kids, things that you're seeing. Um, you know, if, if we do this in business, we do it in other, uh, we certainly do it in schools. Uh, I do as an administrator and I do it with my teachers and, and sort of go through students and ask, you know, what are their, what are their, what are their strengths? What are you seeing the things that they're successful at or good at that we can encourage and support and highlight? And what are their weaknesses? What are the things in formation and human, spiritual, intellectual, or leadership formation that we could work on or help them to get, get stronger at, right? So a conversation as a team, husband and wife, about your children. And what are those things that you're starting to notice? Gifts and talents and, and maybe those places where 
um, they might have some deficits or things that need uh, to be to be addressed. Um, such men, successful men, are conscious that their wives are probably more sensitive and insightful in these areas, and they respect their judgment. If wives are spending more time with their children, particularly if they stay home and have a full-time job as, as homemakers in the home and raising the children or if they're homeschooling or helping kids with homework while you know fathers are away at a, at a more than full-time job, well, Father, you've got to respect that these are the people who are spending the most, you know, what your wife is the one spending the most time with your children. And so respect her insights uh, into what's going on with your children. Um, though they may have disagreements with their wives on tactical matters, love that, they are determined to come to some agreement. They realize how important it is for children to see the parents united. This cannot be understated. Even if perhaps there is some disagreement, there must be an effort to, to come to some agreement and for children to see that their parents are a united team, a partnership, a, 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 an organized front uh, in this, and, and to prevent sort of split parenting, which the kids are going to try and work one parent or turn parents against each other, that the kids need to see and understand from a very early age that whatever one says is the same thing the other one's going to say and that there's not going to be any differentiation between the two. That's critical. Um, furthermore, though parents may argue in front of the children, it's inevitable. We're human. Um, some arguments are going to happen. Um, both are careful never to have a heated quarrel. Um, you know, he says he talks about it's good for children to see two adults uh, who love each other having perhaps a disagreement, but coming to an amicable resolution about it that they can work this out. But what he points out is, is what is a threat to the family unit is quarrels, heated quarrels. And on this, we'll end it on this point. Um, there is per, there's a lot of things that are damaging to a family, but this one is huge because I think we don't, um, perhaps it goes unnoticed. We don't think about or we're not aware of the fact of how attentive our kids are to what's going on. And they pay attention to the fact if we're yelling or we're mad at each other, um, they're not obtuse. Uh, I see it at school sometimes. I might be having a stressful day or something, and, and later in the day a kid will say, you know, are you okay, or what's going on? And I said, why, what's the matter? What, you know, what, no, I'm fine, everything's good. And they were like, oh, well, I just noticed earlier I walked by your office and you looked like you were, you know, something was, something was wrong. Um, so they're not, they're not oblivious to what's going on. Um, <laughs> they're certainly not oblivious if we're screaming at each other which should never happen. So two things I think about as kind of examples with this. One, um, you know, as Catholic uh, deacon and um, as Christians, look to the Holy Family as the model of uh, family life. It is impossible, it's inconceivable to me to imagine Mary and Joseph screaming at each other in front of the child Jesus. Um, to having some knockdown, drag out fight. It's just, it's impossible to imagine. And so if we reflect that into our own homes, there's really never a need uh, to, to scream and fight. Um, I think of a, a, an old little prayer card, holy card that had on the back of it was like um, 10, 10 points for a successful marriage or a happy marriage or something like that. And one of them was um, never raise your voice at your spouse unless the house is on fire. That's true. Um, children should never see parents screaming at each other, period. They shouldn't scream at each other either. Um, and I'll go to this second point to sort of um, illustrate this or think about it. If we, as adults, were invited over to someone's house, friends of ours, people we knew, loved, um, and we were at their house, and at some point, those people started to get into a full-blown screaming uh you know, just a screaming fight, quarrel, a heated quarrel. Imagine how uncomfortable that would make us feel and how inappropriate that would be. And yet, in our homes, in front of our own children, we somehow think that that doesn't make our children uncomfortable, 
them that it doesn't affect them. It does. I mean, it's, it's the, as much as we wouldn't do it, um, we wouldn't go to somebody else's house, I hope, I pray, and get into a fight at someone else's house or around other people or at work or some other social setting. We wouldn't get into a screaming match with our spouse. Um, well, then, heavens, why would we do it in front of our children? Right? So um, that's it for this video. Um, and... Um, just uh, just some 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 thoughts there uh, again don't know if I'll get another one of these in when it'll be if it'll be tomorrow or it may be a couple of days we got a few things coming helping some some friends move Saturday may go camping tomorrow some other things coming up but um, anyways I get back around to it eventually thanks for watching if you like the videos um, you know hit the thumbs up leave comments if you've got questions or feedback suggestions um, but that's it good night from St. Isidore's, and God bless.